Hi flower friends, it's Nicole from Flower Hill Farm and I'm standing on the porch today because I have dozens of bouquets to make, including some mason jar arrangements. So this week we had lily overload. I'm not even kidding, everything is coming to life all at the same time again because of the intense heat that we've all been having. I'm pretty sure everyone's been having some intense heat and some crazy weather. So I have all of my lilies, so I had to go ahead and start my summer CSA. My spring CSA is still in its last week, so I'm doing both CSAs this week. And then I was asked to do flowers for a special private event here in my hometown. So they wanted 10 quart mason jar arrangements, five pint mason jar arrangements, and a large vase arrangement. So I have several dozen bouquets to make. I am gonna start, however, with the CSA bouquets because people are gonna start picking those up in an hour. <laughs> and I gotta get those done. But first I wanna to talk to you guys about all of the bouquet ingredients that we have this week. All of this was born and raised right here on my farm. I didn't bring any other flowers in or anything like that this week. So first of all, <laughs> the lilies. And we have four buckets of lilies and they are starting to open up, which is perfect because um, CSA customers like them fresh, but they also like to see pretty when they pick them up. So we've got a lot of pretty going on. Uh, these were sourced from Awnings America. They are actually second year. I left them in the ground and these are the first to bloom for me this year. They have an array of colors. These are typically the first ones to bloom. Also the yellow is the first one to bloom, but I have one of those too. This top bucket it's more of the same, but guys, check out the, the massive size of some of these lilies. When you leave lilies in the ground and you let them come back and perennialize year after year, the stalks on them get huge. And sometimes a florist doesn't like that or it's not ideal to work with when making like hand-tied arrangements, but that's what I got to work with. So check this out. Some, this is one lily. This is one lily, and this is my head. Like this is the size of this lily. This is massive look at that and now i did i have another local florist that has reached out to me wanting to buy some of my flowers which is exciting because that means that i'll be able to um just have like i'm gone i got a lot of flowers <laughs> i got a lot actually i see some snap, snapdragons that need to be harvested I have them been out in the field this morning anyway i'm looking at them right now i gave a different price to the florist for these Typically, you have like a three to five buds on a lily stem. If you look up wholesale pricing, you'll see 10 stems, three to five buds. This is like 16 buds. So I gave them a different pricing for the bigger buds. And uh, I've got several of these, but a lot of them are just the three to five. Like this, this would be considered a three to five bud. But do you see the difference? I'm not gonna get the same price for this and this. This is insane. This is like an epic arrangement. Can you imagine? Wow, anyway. This is equally beautiful, but this is massive. Ooh, there's a spider on me. Oh no, it's a lace wing. Go, you're good. It's a green lace wing bug. Anyway, okay, I'll start at the end. I have just a few zinnias just a few and they're short but they're perfect for court arrangements basically i was um pinching my zinnias and because they're so short and the court jars are like this they're perfect i can use these I actually have quite a few more down there that i might go snip just to add like one to each mason jar um, and then i have some status in here i have some white and some pink status a ton of snapdragons we've got um, these were harvested over the course of the last five days, so they're starting to really open up. I wanted these to be a little bit more opened up because it's an event. You don't want to show up to an event with a, a bouquet that's closed and you'd be like, oh, you can enjoy it in a few days. So the Snapdragons were harvested several days ago and then stored upstairs. We actually put an air conditioner unit in the spare bedroom upstairs and that's where I've been storing all these flowers because I don't have a cooler. We're actually considering putting a cool bot in that room, but it is a giant pain in the butt going up and down the stairs. So we'll see. Better than nothing, right? Oh yeah. Check out this one. This is called the Purple Twist Snapdragon. It is new to me this year. <laughs> Going on down the line, I do have some Larkspur. This is, I think it's the fancy white bee because it's got the white center. Um, yeah, my labels, <laughs> whatever. Fancy white bee, this is absolutely gorgeous and I have a ton more out there that are about ready to burst. I'm excited, I hope last night's heavy rains did not um, knock them down. Got some bachelor buttons. And guess what I just said, guys? 
peonies. These were in the fridge for five weeks and I took them out last night and look. Oh yeah, they're gonna be amazing. I, I think I have like 14 of them over there, so peonies. I have this thing of Rebecca, some aren't gonna make it. This is a little too flimsy, so is it, you know? Oh, that's why. <laughs> it's not in the water. Silly me. I'm gonna keep it in the water and see if it perks back up. This one too. Yep, this one too. Son of a... Anyway, it's beautiful and I have a ton more out there. And then I also am harvesting some lavender off of my lavender plants that I put in last year. Isn't this pot the cutest? I love it. Oh, some, some of these flocks must not be in the water either. <laughs> but that's okay, that's why I harvest them a couple days ahead of time and see what's gonna make it. Anyway, I've got three buckets of annual flocks, all different colors. This was a gift from a viewer, thank you so much. I have Persian Crest, that's what I'm gonna use as a filler for my CSA this week, and these Alliums. It's Alliums, I'll put the name on the screen because I don't know how to say it and it's okay. Um, these are absolutely beautiful and you can use and harvest these at several different stages. Um, they will open up and be like a purpley firework. I like to use them at this stage and they will actually completely turn purple and I have some out there that are still green and you can also use them in the full green stage but this is my favorite stage to use them because I just and they're so like they're six feet tall out there I just cut them about two feet tall because I needed something that was going to be um, big enough to be with those lilies because those lilies are massive so these are gonna be just exactly it same with the crests like one one thing of crests is is quite large and it's big enough to compete with the lily. Oh, I actually do have a, a sprig of Bupleurum in here, um, which I do, I have a little bit of, of Bupleurum, which is another great filler. I just grabbed this one. Um, this just has a couple like Orlea and a whole bunch of random things in here, but look, it's my first Bells of Ireland. I love it. Now, some people have a hard time germinating these and uh, I'm gonna tell you, I germinated it inside of a paper towel, a wet paper towel in a Ziploc bag. That is how I germinated, because I did a first try, I did soil blocks, and I think maybe three out of 80 of them germinated, and I was like, wait, this is weird. So I did a little bit more research, and I saw, well, maybe I should put it in a paper towel and um, let it soak in a wet paper towel in a Ziploc bag. And sure enough, with I mean, it, it, took, it took weeks. I would say my first sprout I saw in maybe 10 days, and then up to three weeks later, I was still finding sprouts inside. So, uh, Bells of Ireland, man. Some people think they stink, but I think they smell like an apple mint. Like apple mint, a little bit of celery. Okay, more snapdragons, more flocks, more rebecca, and then this last thing that I haven't told you, but hold on. Oh, Mrs. Burns citrus lemon basil. And a firework gumfrina. I forgot I had that in here. A firework gumfrina is uh, just that. Look at the stem length on that one. I'm excited. It's my first one. The fireworks gumfrina is really taken off in height. And I really wanted to post a picture of this on the 4th of July. It just hadn't um, fully developed yet. Actually, right here, there's a little. There's more gumfrina that are going to go in the um, quart or pint, probably, mason jars because they are short and there's a little bit more status in here. Anyway, this is Mrs. Burns Citrus Lemon Basil and I thought it would be nice to put a sprig of each inside the mason jars. It smells like fruity pebbles. That's what I've decided. I've decided that the lime basil and the Mrs. Burns Citrus Lemon Basil smells like fruity pebbles. The cereal. My CSA customers are getting spoiled this week. Spoiled. All right, what are we doing? Snaps. I'm keeping these fairly simple this week because, I mean, these things are massive. Ma 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 massive. So basically, three snapdragons, the lilies, and some filler, and then the allium. Oh, that's so cool! I'm gonna have to go get more crests. Sometimes the crests, when you let it go to the seed pods, gets yellow leaves on the bottom. I'm just stripping those off. Wow. I'm gonna let the lily go up a little bit further. Stand back, stand back. So basically this is kind of like an orangey purple one and I love it. I'm gonna put a couple pieces of flax around the bottom and that's it. I think that's perfect for this one. See that? The fuchsia. 
and then this fuchsia on the side. Boom. That's it. I have a bucket out here for garbage, for trimming um, the stems, and then I have a bucket full of water here, a black florist bucket. These buckets back here, these white ones, those are my harvesting buckets, and I got those from a friend who owns a local pool company. Those are the buckets that the chemicals and some pool products come in. I've washed them probably 30 times each, but I've been using them for a couple of seasons. They're perfect. These black thick buckets is what I usually deliver in. I suppose it doesn't matter. I could deliver in the white buckets. Okay, so I've got these set up here, and I'm actually, see how I have a flax on each side? What I'm gonna do, by the way, the, the lighting is weird in here with my face, it's like shadows and drill. I'm actually gonna put both the flocks in the front only because I'm wrapping them in paper. And I, what I've noticed is by using craft paper, if something's along the back side that's rather delicate, like a flox, it'll get squashed. It won't look pretty when you open it up. So that way the person can just kind of take the band off, put it in a vase, and arrange it the way that they wanted to or just leave them in the front because they're pretty up there. I love them. I would be happy with this on my table, faux show. Sure. I do find that wrapping them does protect them in the bucket, so I am gonna wrap these one at a time. If I had maybe someone helping me, <laughs> I could make the bouquet and then hand it off and that person could um, just do the wrap, but it's just me. It's quite pretty, and then I put a sticker on it. That way everyone knows where it's from. Okay, now I'm gonna kinda speed it up because I have um, dozens of these to make and people are gonna be here in an hour. <laughs> okay, so, oh boy. Ooh. dark purples and the yellows. I love it. I love it. Where's my clippers? Especially love the flocks with the little purple eyes. That I think is just a little bonus touch. Bonus, bonus. Now I have planned on, oh look at this alien front and center. I had planned on um, doing a bouquet bar this weekend until I had the request for the special event. And when you get a request like that, I don't do weddings, so it's not a wedding, it's just a private event. And, um, cause I don't do like bridal bouquets or boutonnieres or bridesmaids and stuff like that. I just am not into that world yet. I don't know if I'm ever gonna be in that world, but I just, so, and here's my thinking on that was, okay, I could have hosted a bouquet bar, which I know people are excited for and want to attend. But I also never know if people are going to show up to said bouquet bar. So this person was guaranteeing me to sell 21 bouquets or whatever it was that I'm making. So, and all of those bouquets were at X amount of dollar price points. So, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> it's like guaranteed money versus let's see who shows up. And that was my decision making process. So I'm no longer having a bouquet bar this week. And I never scheduled one, I never announced one, but I was going to have one. But, um, but instead we open up the CSAs and I'm doing special events. <laughs> Hopefully bouquet bar soon. I know someone is going to ask. I use size 32 rubber bands. I love this crest. It really just connects the dots. La la la. So in this one, I did fold the front back because I didn't want to damage the lilies that are open. So I folded the front back and this is how they are going to be receiving this a bouquet. Sticker. So I realized um, I had cut the basil specifically for the mason jar bouquets because I didn't think the basil was tall enough for the bouquets, but, and I was thinking I only had 15 of them, but then I remembered I actually cut like 30 of them thinking that maybe 50% would, <laughs> would wilt and not make it. But since they all made it, I'm able to tuck in a sprig of basil and some of them are um, tall. So, yay. I love it. I think it makes it just, mm, mm. And these colors, if you're not growing Mrs. Burns citrus lemon basil, you're gonna regret it. Okay, in the bucket. You missed Papa, he said he's coming tomorrow. He just made, he just stopped, my dad just stopped and Axel was sleeping because <laughs> it's early. And um, he just stopped because 
a tornado tore through the next town over last night and he was just making sure that everything was good here. Um, come here, it's okay. Come here, I will hug you just like Papa would. <laughs> he was only here for 10 minutes. He said he's coming back tomorrow to work on your work. Papa's special. <laughs> he's so sad. So I actually do have a CSA member who is not gonna get lilies because um, she has a cat and she just, I, she's been my CSA member for a couple of years now and I know she doesn't do lilies because of the cat. So I'm gonna make her bouquet without. Oh, I forgot. I'm actually, I have a lot of stock back here too. I forgot about that, but the stock is going into the mason jar bouquets. So this is Pat and Pat's gonna get just a, a little bit more in the way of snapdragons because She's not getting a lily this week. And she's getting uh, an amazing Rebecca. And she's getting this Cosmo. And a basil. And some phlox. Look at the length on some of this flox. It's like two feet tall. That's because I've been pinching it forever. Oh wow, yeah, I'm excited about this one. So Pat, this is actually her last spring CSA. So my CSA, and I know someone's gonna ask, CSA stands for Community Supported Agriculture, and basically it's a way that's, it's, it's historical. It's been going on for a very long time and it's basically members of the public investing in your farm. So CSAs are sold in advance of the season and basically they're providing you with a little bit of income in advance of you harvesting anything and a lot of times that money is used to buy the seeds and stuff like that. That's how CSA were originated. Now, um, there are vegetable CSAs, there are flower CSAs, there are cheese CSAs, there are milk CSAs, there are chicken CSAs. Wow, Pat. I love this. I love it. There are CSAs for basically anything you can think of. That basil, man. All right, trimming it up. The CSA basically is exactly that. So there are members who get weekly bouquets. My CSA is $100 for five weeks of bouquets. All right, I'm gonna go wrap this up. Okay, it's time for me to go get another bucket because this bucket <laughs> is full. These are the first four bouquets. Yes, only four. I need to get moving faster, don't you think? Oh gosh. Let's see. Oh gosh, there's a hair in my eye. Okay. So there, there's a crew taking down trees that, well, the trees fell over in the storm last night and there's a crew set up. So all these cars are slowing down in front <laughs> like all the tractor trailers are downshifting right in front of my house because there's a, a tree crew. Anyway, one of my new CSA members just came. <laughs> I'm very excited because I didn't realize it, but so it's actually the family of one of my former television interns. When I worked, used to work at the TV station, um, one of my interns is Taylor and her mom and her sister just came there. They're my CSA members. I had no idea. So I'm very excited and hopefully they're going to bring Taylor. She's living in the big city now, so she's not around very much. Anyway, while they were here, I was um, putting together this bouquet and this is one of those uh, white ones with the purpley amazingness inside. I've got some basil, snapdragons, crests, ooh, some phlox. I'm gonna put an allium in, I forgot that. And I did stick a rubecchia in. I'm really saving the rubecchias for the um, mason jar arrangements. Oh, yeah, that's so cute. I just adore the way the craft paper just makes it, it just, makes it so inviting. That's what I feel like it is. Like you look at it, it's inviting. I want it. I want to pick it up. I want to put it in my face. I just love it. Okay, so I made all of the bouquets that I needed to make, but all the ones that are picking up here at the farm this morning are made. And then the rest will be for Saturday pickup. But <laughs> I want to get these mason jars set up so I know how many flowers I'll have left over. That way, whatever's left, I can either post for sale or maybe just bulk up the CSA member bouquets. But I really want to get these mason jars started and I'm doing this more of an assembly line. So I brought my, these are half tables. They're really convenient. They're only 18 inches wide and I've been using them in my bouquet bars. And I also brought them to my grandmother's surprise party. 
you used them for the food. But anyway, they're really convenient and I have these covers for them which makes them look really nice and clean. But I'm gonna set up the mason jars on top, fill them with some water with some flower food in it, and then quickly as possible, get those bouquets together. This is the flower food that I use. I bought it on Amazon. It's uh, just croissant, and I make it like a gallon jug of it. So this particular customer supplied me with the jars. They didn't need to, I didn't ask them to, they just said, oh, I have the jars, and that was perfect. So they dropped them off last night. They're coming to pick them up this afternoon. I didn't wanna fill them all the way up with water because she's putting them in her own vehicle, and I don't know how experienced she is with transporting flowers. I'm nervous that they're gonna be damaged. I'm nervous that water's gonna splash all over the place. I'm just a little terrified of the whole situation. But anyway, I just filled them up a little bit with water, and then, I'm gonna give her some flower food if she wants to fill them up more once they're at the event. So I'm gonna start by placing a basil in every container. So I trimmed the basil because I, I want it just gently touching the top of the jar and then everything else is gonna kinda go on top of it. Everything's gonna have to get trimmed here. Uh, my stems are really long, so I'm gonna start with the smaller sm um, snapdragons and go with um, the pint jars, because I do have some smaller snaps and I think that'll be perfect. So basically the pints are just full of phlox and snapdragons, and I put a little zinnia in there. Let's see what else I can pump in. Ooh, and I'm gonna put a rubecchia in every one too. I love these little mason jars. They're so cute. And these are the pint ones. These are tiny, um, but they're full of color. And that was the request. They wanted something full of color. The tablecloths they were using are cream, and they just wanted bursts of color on the top. So I think that's a really pretty mason jar. I just pulled off a leaf with a couple of um, bites in it. I don't like to, if there's a basil that's been chewed a little bit, I like to take it off and smell it and then throw it. So a little bit of a, a trick that if you want to make sure something is gonna be the right height in the vase, I put it on the edge of the table and then I'll hold on. So here's the grouping of phlox. It's gonna go in this one right here. Oh, you can't even see it. Ready, I'm gonna go down a little bit. Okay, so I want them to sit like right above the basil here. So I'm just gonna measure it up against the table and then trim it. And that's exactly the height that they'll go inside the bouquet. Wonderful. Okay, so I'm just filling with flax. I might, I might put more basil in each, I've got more. So many colors, oh, I love it. shadowy under here now. Watch, I'll just make one turn. Ah, let there be light. Okay, so uh, included in this um, custom order of mason jars was also a vase that they wanted for a main table. So I randomly started putting things together and now I'm doing the lilies that are more open because this event is tomorrow. Um, and this is different for me. I usually do hand tie bouquets. I, I don't do mason jars, I don't do vases, I don't do this normally. I feel like I need something right here. Well, I need a lot more. This this is bare bones still. I just have lilies and the rubecchia um, and then, but guys, look. like. This table, I am so happy with these and they're all just little individual um, bowls of beauty and that's all they're meant to be. They're just little um, table centerpieces for an event. Um, and that's like this, this Rebecca looks fake to me. It looks like I told Veda, my daughter, I was like, babe, doesn't that look like a cartoon? It looks fake, it looks animated. Anyway, it's just, I love the furls on the leaves and 
It's just perfect. I adore it. Okay, so I'm gonna be putting um, snapdragons and other things, and I'm probably gonna have to go out and harvest more snapdragons because I blew through a lot of snaps, but look how many flowers I have left, guys. Like, look at the lilies. Like, I'm waiting to hear back from the florist. I'm pretty sure a florist is gonna be wanting a couple dozen of those stems, but I have a lot of phlox left. I have a lot of fillers left. Uh, I have a lot of stuff left. So I'm gonna go ahead and um, probably put out the call that bouquets are gonna be available tomorrow. I have an inchworm friend. I think he's more like half an inch. Anyway, I'm gonna put him off to the side. <gasps> Do you ever like suck in and accidentally suck in something that you're trying to blow away? Oh, I've done that before. Anyway, I, I took a pause from making this vase arrangement because I have to leave for deliveries in an hour and I don't have my deliveries done. So <laughs> I'm doing that now. <laughs> so I have another orange and purpley goodness with, this is stock actually, and then the allium and then a couple of the dark uh, snapdragons, which are pretty amazing. And I also have basil in here. So I'm gonna go ahead and wrap this up. I just went out and cut some more crests and some snapdragons and some lavender, more lavender, and oh, this larkspur opened up overnight. Just the same as that um, pink with a fancy white pink bee thing. Anyway, I have to kick into uh, Sonic Speed because I have to leave here very soon. <laughs> So I'm throwing a peony in this one. This is actually a custom birthday bouquet that I'm delivering today. And uh, this is a bowl of beauty peony that I've been storing, yay! This lily is my personal favorite of the ones that are ready right now. Oh my gosh. They're, it's so deep and mysterious, if you will. I adore it. It's really special. All right, this is also a custom birthday order, so I'm gonna brighten it up with some yellows. Wow. I'm actually gonna put, oh, like stock makes me a little bit dizzy. You wanna smell my stocks? <laughs> okay, yep, yep. It's starting to rain, number one, but number two, I just, I just killed the lily petal, so I'm literally just tearing this lily off. Well, try and tearing it, but it won't work, so. I just cut it off, which is okay because it's got another fully open one and then three others that are going to open, so it's okay. It's okay. The bees are starting to realize that I'm here with flowers. <laughs> Please don't. Anyway, woohoo, another one. Done. Okay, I have to run. It's just afternoon. My last Friday pickup just showed up and um, just left with their flowers. It's 12.05 and I have another, oh gosh, I already made another dozen. And I also, um, <laughs> while my CSA member was here, I ended up making this vase. So here it is. It's a lot of oranges, a lot of purples, and a lot of pinks. And I'll be going through and taking off any loose petals, but I really like it. I think they're gonna love it. And uh, these lilies will all open up. So the event is tomorrow, so everything will be nice, which is why I felt comfortable putting the Cosmo in there too, because that's actually been open for a couple of days, but it's still gonna look great tomorrow, so. And there's that Rebecca that I love with just the flecks of that brown, that beautiful brown. All right, anyway, I'm gonna load up the car and take off. Thank you for sticking around and we'll see you soon. Here are the bundles headed for the car. I just, I love them. <laughs> I'm so excited to make these deliveries. So we ended up fitting the 15 jars inside these boxes and they're quite large. These boxes are huge and uh, they're coming to pick them up. I don't even have to deliver. I still think that that Rubecchia is fake. It's so pretty. What else was I going to tell you about basil? I don't remember what I was going to say. I just want this basil in my nose. It smells better than a rose.
dreams every day. Good morning, flower friends, and well, it's not morning where you are, maybe. Maybe you're watching this. Maybe I'm gonna post it at three o'clock. I better not say that. I'm about to start recording this video, and there's a mole in the pool. <laughs> I have to go save him. He's on top of the solar cover, but let's go get him. Oh my gosh, this is not the first time, guys. And when I saved the last one, it screamed like a woman in distress. Like the most shrill. Let's see if it does it this time. It's in the middle of the pool. Uh, but thankfully the solar cover is on. The poor thing's soaking wet. I'm coming, child. I'm coming. Okay, let's see. Come here, child. We'll get you. Where's the thing? Here it is. Come here. Come here. You have the biggest claws. You, you must. You must let me rescue you. You must. No. Get towards the edge. Log the edge, child. Okay. Okay. He's okay. He's gonna be okay. He's not making a crazy noise. Look at the paws on that baby. All right, I'm just gonna put him over the edge. Don't fall. Moles eat meat. It's hissing. I heard it hiss. Voles eat vegetation. So moles I want on my farm because they eat all of the bugs and the grubs and the Japanese beetle larva. Moles are not killing your plants. If you have small rodents killing your plants, it's voles. Moles, meat, voles, vegetation. See ya. Guy look like a Robert De Niro.